www.gundam.tk presents V2 Assault Gundam. Hello everyone, and I hope that you're a fan of the series V Gundam, because today I'll be taking a look at the V2 Assault Gundam. Now, to look at the actual Gundam after everything's been built, the first thing you'll notice about this is how many parts there are kicking around. Now, it really wouldn't be a V Gundam without the ridiculous core fighter, and I think that this giant V of a core fighter is probably the most ridiculous uh, one ever made in any Gundam series, even more than Crossbow. Nice touches, it comes with a pilot, clear cockpit, and this is going to end up being able to pull off, and this will become the upper part of the chest of the Gundam. These can also bend a little bit, so you can adjust the V on the back, but my big complaint about them already is that uh, no matter how well you squeeze them together, they don't want to stay in place. Now this is going to, you can pull this up, slide it down, and get it out of the way. And I'll do that in a moment. And this is where you'll attach the head when you actually put it onto the Gundam. So the core fighter looks ridiculous, but in a, in a cheesy kind of way, it's pretty cool. So now to put it together, very simple. The foot is on a very simple ball joint, which we will just plug into the foot. And up at the top, take the lower part of the torso and just put the legs on like that and then we'll attach all the skirt armor on in a moment. Now first of all, this doesn't feel anywhere near as solid as a high grade and when you start doing this, you start to see why. I made a mistake earlier, you have to put the front skirts on first and these side pieces just have a peg here and it just plugs into the hole there and the back skirt. Now right away, because the skirt is uh, five different separate pieces, it doesn't feel solid at all. So whenever you try to pose the legs, you're going to get uh, the feeling that something is going to fall off, which I've already seen. So the legs are very held up by the front armor. If you try to pull that forward and get the leg forward, it doesn't want to go, and already things want to fall off. So this is going to get hardly any marks for the leg mobility. So now I'll just complain for a moment, trying to put that back together there. This skirt can fall off very easily, and once it does, you have to actually take the leg off to plug it back into the point up here, and you have to pull off everything else first. So really, I'm not impressed with this skirt armor. At all. Now where the lower section disappointed, let's hope the top half is a little bit better. So I've taken this off of the core fighter, and here you can see that there's just a hole, which you'll plug into the peg, and now, once you do that, you are going to see the noticeable hallmarks of the V Gundam, its giant V wings sticking out of the back. Now the arms are very simple, just put uh, the poly cap onto the part here, but as soon as you do that, I already found that it wants to lean, so the balance is already off. So looking up and down at it, here is the V2 Assault Gundam. You can adjust these wings to go out a little bit. They never quite line up with the front V, which is always something that bothered me in the anime. But uh, it doesn't get any better with the toy. But it looks pretty cool. Let's put the head in. So when all is said and done, the head isn't too hard to put on. But this is the V2 Assault Gundam. Now, as I was hoping, the gold really does make it stand out. It uh, already looks different from almost any other Gundam. And the orange or yellow, however you want to call it here, uh, it goes well with the gold. I thought because they're different colors that it would look a little silly, but uh, the gold and yellow end up working together. Now the head, not very poseable, and the arms, they're okay. But again, you can tell that they're really designed to be, uh, they're designed with the transformation in mind, not with posing. Now something I really hated about the V Gundam, and I hate even more about the V2 Gundam, is to put the shield on, you have to attach it on the back of the Gundam's elbow. So if you want the uh, shield anywhere near the front, you have to twist the arm completely, but you can see there's a piece up here that this gets in the way of. Also, these red pieces have to be pulled out, and I actually had to use the model knife to do it because it was too much of a pain. So, you can bend the arm down, and the shoulder is going to get in the way, and you can put the shield on. So now, does the shield look cool? 
Yeah, I completely think it does. I really like the shield. It really adds to the whole bulk of the uh, Gundam. The only problem is you have to look back here and see that the guy's got his arm twisted halfway around his back. So, could have done a lot better with the shield, Bantai. So when he's all loaded up, ignoring the twisted back arm, this weapon doesn't sit too badly in the arm. The only thing being is that if you actually look here, the weapon bends out, so it doesn't have a very solid uh, joint there, so it's just going to flop around. But overall, what they were trying to do with the V2 Assault Gundam was, uh, this is very much a tough melee type Gundam, and it also has some range attack, of course. But compared to the V1 Gundam, this V2 looks sharp, and the goal and the assault parts are a real plus in my book. So here's the V2 on the right side by side with the V1 dash Gundam on the left. Now the V1 dash, if you took off the dash uh, weapons pack, I think it would be incredibly small and wouldn't stack up. But the V1 isn't that much smaller as I expected, although the shoulders and the shield and these, the V fins in general, just add a lot more bulk to it. Now I really like the plainness of the V1 Gundam, and the V2 Gundam is a uh, bling. But uh, in contrast, I think they work pretty well together. Now where I have to feel bad about the V2 Gundam, uh, and the V1 for that matter, is because they are old kits, and they're not master grades, they are 1 100th, so on the left we have the new Gundam, and on the right the V2. The problem being is that the scale is just wrong. It should be 22 meters on the left and 15 on the right, but uh, they're not really close and the size of the master grades in general just tower over these old high grades. So Bandai, I hope one day that you will make a master grade of the V2 Gundam. Throw in the assault pack, throw in the buster pack, and just make it a general ass kicker. So when I'm making the top fighter, this is where you see the cheating come in place. You actually pull off the lower parts of the waist, the back. This is a special piece only used for the top fighter and the arms go through a fairly complex transformation, basically pull off the hands and move all the gold parts around, but let's see how it looks put together. So here's a look at the top fighter, basically put on the waist, put on the side skirts, a nice touch, you can put the gun in here after rotating it, but of course it doesn't want to stay very well until you click it into place, and what we'll do is put the core fighter on and have a top fighter. And there it is, the V2 Gundam's top fighter. Actually, as far as uh, transforming Gundams go, this is about the only one that, though it's a little dubious as a spaceship, it doesn't look like it's just the top half of a Gundam bent over. So I have to give it full marks that despite its pull and uh, put together, uh, I really like this top fighter. And the colors, again, the gold and the gold, yellow, work really well together. Nice job here. So after looking at the top fighter, which I was impressed with, it's the bottom fighter, which I'm far less with. This piece is separate, you'll have to use it only for this transformation, and bend the legs and fix the feet, and one nice touch though is that the beam warp up and splits into two parts and goes there. So now we'll put the core fighter in. Well, I can't believe it again, but Bandai, you took the bottom legs of a, web of a Gundam, and though that's really easy to fall off, so I won't like that, uh, because the core fighter is so uniquely styled, you don't really notice as much that it's just a big flying set of legs. So Bandai not bad with the top fighter, not bad, or good with the top fighter, not bad with the bottom fighter. A big improvement over the V Gundam. So final wrap up. The uh, I've never built models as old as these 1994s and I stick mostly with master grades. And it's easy to see why once you build these. However, as a fan of the cartoon, there's really no other choice if you want to have a V Gundam. So Bandai, my request to you is make a master grade of the V2. Forget the V1, just the V2. So finally, I really wanted to say thank you to everybody who watches these videos, and especially the people that uh, subscribe and take the time to write comments. If you ever have any ideas on how to make these better, let me know, and uh, you can check out lots more reviews. Once again, www.gundam.tk. Thanks for watching, everybody.